As we have mentioned, the Biden administration has been acutely focused on a number of foreign policy challenges this week, from the ongoing Israel-Hamas war to countering China in the Indo-Pacific and the funding fight on Capitol Hill over U.S. aid to Ukraine. For more on all of this, I'm joined now by Democratic Congressman from New York, Gregory Meeks. He's the ranking member on the House Foreign Affairs Committee. Congressman, thank you so much for joining me. I really appreciate it. Good to be with you. I want to start with where we started this segment, which is that trilateral meeting taking place at the White House right now. What message do you think that trilateral meeting sends to China? And what are the deliverables that you would like to see come from it? Well, look, it says that uh, the, the Democratic countries uh, in uh, the Indo-Pacific are going to stick together uh, and going to work together. Uh, you know, it is historic uh, in, in nature in that regard. So when you look at what President Biden has done, bringing together for the first time uh, at Cap David, uh, historic with Japan and South Korea, uh, now also adding in uh, Australia, working together, uh, the Philippines. Uh, it is showing that the Indo-Pacific will continue to be uh, an open uh, 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 area and that the democratic countries uh, are not going to let an authoritarian government come in and try to use coercion or other matters, and we're going to work very closely together in that regard. Let's turn now to the Middle East and Israel specifically. You have said you will not approve the sale of F-15 fighter jets to Israel without what you have called assurances about what they will be used for. Can you help us, Congressman, be specific? What kinds of assurances do you need to see before you would approve such a sale? Look, we've got a lot of things that's going on right now. And what I want to do is to make sure that I get all of the facts uh, and then know. For example, uh, you know, we have a situation, one dealing with Hamas, who now says they don't have the 40 uh, hostages uh, enough to continue the, the ceasefire nom uh, conversation. Uh, number two, you have a situation where you have uh, various, we almost may have a famine going on and starvation. Uh, with how many uh, humanitarian trucks to get aid into to feed uh, the Palestinians. Uh, you know, I need to know what, what's happening on the ground there. You have a situation, just what I heard you talking about in the last uh, in, in, in the interview, where Iran may be trying to attack Israel. And so Israel has to have what it needs also to make sure that it can uh, starve off anything that uh, may happen there. So there's a lot of things in this time for me to make sure that I get all of the information before I have to make a decision on that. In fact, we're talking about the, um, the, the, F the, the F-15s, uh, and what we're talking about really would not be deliverable to Israel until uh, for at least five years from now. Mm. So uh, I think that the window uh, is to make sure, and the responsibility that I have, uh, is to make sure that I get the assurances of all the facts that are taking place on the ground from all of the parties that are concerned. Well, you take me to my next question, because as you say, the F-15 fighter jets wouldn't get there for quite some time. So I guess the question is, Congressman, is the U.S. using enough leverage? Do they need to apply more pressure than these verbal warnings to Israel? Do they need, does the U.S. need to condition aid to Israel in order to see the types of results mitigating civilian deaths, which is what the president is calling for? Well, you see that the president is working very hard, uh, and there are certain things that, you know, that one of the things I'm trying to find out, how many uh, uh, gateways that are now that will be in addition there to, to get the aid in, uh, or uh, the ability to have where we have, may have 400 trucks going in, uh, is it going up to 700, to 800? Let's talk to uh, the uh, World Food Organization and other uh, NGOs that may be on the ground so that we know that we are feeding people. I'm focused on wanting to stop a starvation from taking place also. So all of those things are very uh, important uh, just uh, to, to know and to make facts and to decisions. Uh, the responsibility that I have uh, as the ranking Democrat on the Foreign Affairs Committee 
uh, is let's let's get that and, and and let's see where we go from go from there. Those well, are all important things. As as you noted, there are growing concerns that there could be a retaliatory strike by Iran on Israel. If that were to happen, if those concerns were to grow, would that change your assessment? Would you then be willing to provide uh, those F-15 fighter jets and aid without conditions attached? Yeah, look, so in my opinion, part of what the deal is, you know, I don't want 1,000 pound, uh, 1, 1, pound or 2,000 pound bombs going into Gaza. Mm -hmm. uh, that seems to me to be the wrong thing to do. It, it causes, you know, indiscriminate uh, death of uh, children and, and, and women and innocents. That should not happen. Now, at the same time, if Israel is attacked by uh, Iran or Hezbollah or any of them, then the other, those weapons may be appropriate to be utilized there. So, because you're talking about what's coming in from there. So, I want to make sure that Israel um, is, you know, because we know what, Hamas, what, what uh, Hezbollah and Iran, they don't want Israel to exist. We're not going to allow Israel to disappear. And we're going to support Israel in that regard to make sure that they have the right, as we've talked about all the time, to defend themselves. And so if, in fact, they're attacked, we in the United States are not going to turn our back on Israel. We're going to help them, you know, give them what they need to defend themselves. I think that's what this is all about. It's, it's about what's happening in Gaza and what's happening uh, in with uh, Hezbollah and Iran. And yeah. we've got to take all of those things into consideration. Congressman, let me ask you about another critical region. Of course, Ukraine overnight, there was another massive Russian airstrike on Ukraine. Congress has yet to approve more aid to Ukraine. Where do you stand on some of these new proposals, like providing aid to Ukraine in the form of a loan, for example, something that former President Trump has said that he has supported and therefore seems to be gaining support among some Republicans? I think what we need to do is to pass the uh, supplemental uh, bill, the security supplemental bill that was passed in the Senate in a bipartisan way. That is the quickest way for us to get to Ukraine what they need to defend themselves and push back Russia. You know, as long as we were supplying uh, them the arms that they needed, they were not only winning, they were knocking Russia back. You can look at over the 300 and some odd thousand soldiers they've, they've killed. You can look at the destruction of uh, Russian airplanes, etc. What they need is air cover. What they need is some attackums and other you know, weapons to push back. They showed their confidence over the, they showed their ability over the last couple of years that this war has gone on. Just give them what they need and you guess what? It helps Ukrainians, but not only it's out for our own uh, national security interests. You heard uh, what the Prime Minister of Japan talked about. Mm -hmm. They know that China's watching what's going on also. So if you want to beat back against China, this is the way to do it in Ukraine, giving Ukraine what it needs. And it needs it urgently right now. So I would say to the Speaker, just put the Senate bill on the floor so that we can then pass that bill here. The next day it will be on the President's desk, or that night, he will sign mm -hmm. it and we can then start giving uh, Ukraine the ammunition that it needs right. so that it can continue its fight. All right, Congressman Gregory Meeks, thank you so much for your time. Really appreciate it. Thanks for watching. Stay updated about breaking news and top stories on the NBC News app or follow us on social media.